fucking moron! <laughs> hey! Moron! <laughs> Duh! Look, look, look at me! I'm the whole water boy, dude! Shout out to my man, Ron Oliver, where Cowboys Music won. Um, gotta love the beat from this. It's kind of chill, is what I need. I, it, it relaxes me when I hear this, and it makes me feel that much better. Good morning, good people. Mark Holmes, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I wanna say thank you all for watching commenting subscribing and being part of the joe boo sports report without you guys as well as you ladies you know that this literally does not work i hope everybody's having a great day um it has been raining like crazy cats and dogs you know it seems like we've gone from one extreme to the other we were literally drying up to the point where they said don't go fishing there's not enough water for the fish it would stress them out now, I think they're actually getting flooded right on down the plane. The way the storms came through last night, it was like gangbusters. Just boom, 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 and just constantly raining down, which kind of feels like the cowboy season here. It's um, interesting to say the least. Now, listening, of course, to Jerry Jones, when you look at things, unfortunately, at the moment it's still a little early to tell what team the cowboys really are we saw the good cowboys and we saw the bad cowboys um on this past week but what's apparent is the problems that we had in the playoffs were exposed against new orleans stopping the run clearly we could not stop the run um maybe some of this is we got a new defensive coordinator. We got some new players. We're still figuring that out. I, I'm not ready to hit the panic button on it just yet. It was one just but ugly game. The other part of the equation, of course, is running the football. We're trying running back by committee. And sometimes the thing is, sometimes you need a running back sometimes has to get into a rhythm. And sometimes you see running backs that seem to get stronger as the day goes on. The problem may be with this running back by committee that there's not really a lead dog and nobody really gets into a rhythm. And that what we have is we have a lot of guys that are good guys. Or you could say we have a lot of Robins. Maybe we need a few more Batman, which are more of the leaders as opposed to the complimentary guy. I feel like Tony Pollard was a Robin. He was a complimentary guy. I feel like Rico is a complimentary guy. But you need a main guy to go forward there. Now, Jerry Jones, of course, who, you, you know, you, I, I, I say with Jerry Jones, maybe we just should not necessarily listen to what he has to say because Jerry Jones will say so many different things. Jerry Jones is the walking sound bite or the dog whistle that everybody goes to, runs to. Um, a few weeks ago, he was talking about, you know, I've seen teams that have traded for running backs, you know, in the middle of the season and went on to win the Super Bowl, which is actually a direct reference to the Philadelphia Eagles as much as it pains me to say that. But they traded for Jay Ajay in the middle of the season, which gave them a boost. And we know how much the running game has helped Jalen Hurts and that team. In fact, if it wasn't for Saquon, you know, they lost that second game because Saquon dropped the pass. But without Saquon that first game, they're not winning the game, even though they have really good wide receivers and a tight end. It still needs to be a decent running game. Now, for me, I've been looking at the Cowboys from Mike McCarthy's standpoint where Mike McCarthy has never been that guy that really wants to run the football. He'd rather throw the football all over the place. He'd rather hit seven, eight, nine guys you know, with passes than to have to run the ball 30 times. That's just his makeup and his M.O. However, you need to have a balance of that. And even when he won the Super Bowl, his leading rusher only had 700 and some odd yards. 
But the difference was, was he ended up having a Greg Jennings, a Donald Driver, a Jordy Nelson, um, and a Randall Cobb for wide receivers. He had his veteran lead dog. He ended up having a complimentary uh, you know, player that was the stud, much like C.D. Lamb is. And then, of course, he had other guys that were young and, and, and abutting uh, wide receivers. <sighs> right now, you've got C.D. as your stud, and then you got a whole bunch of Robins. And what may be clear, and this is a question that I've had, is um, you might remember in training camp that Brandon Cooks left training camp a week ahead of everybody else to go back to Dallas. And they said it wasn't bad news. They said for good news. We never heard what that was. But Brandon Cooks was a little bit nicked up during training camp. We don't know if he's still a little bit injured or if there's an injury there or something else that's going on that's not disclosed. But he's also becoming an older veteran that we need a true number two. Jalen Tolbert, well, he's still very, very young, and he may step into that role. But this is where the wise teams, like the Rams, went out and made moves to help their team. They went out and they ended up getting an Odell Beckham and a um, Von Miller to supplement a good team. They took those risks. They ended up giving up valuable draft pick. They, they literally gave up draft pick, I think a third or maybe a third or a fourth, maybe a third, for Von Miller in the middle of the season, knowing that they weren't going to resign him. But they said, looked at this and said, this is an investment for us to make it this year. Now, the Cowboys have four extra comp picks right now. At the moment, because we got Dak Prescott and C.D. Lamb's contract done, we have $26 million to work with. We have triggers in their contracts that they can use next year to gain more cap space. And if you're Jerry Jones... I don't mean to put it out here like this, but you're getting old. No, no, you're not getting old. You're old. You're old. And windows don't come around often. And here's the thing. Take a look right now when you talk, and I'm going to piss off the 49er fan, but take a look at San Francisco right now. This season isn't starting off the way that they, they wanted to. You don't go to Minnesota, lose again to Minnesota, and lose Debo for a couple of games. You end up losing Christian McCaffrey, who's on injured reserve. And now things get to be a little bit harder because you lost two of your big playmakers. If you're the Eagles, <laughs> the Eagles, mind you, um, you got all kinds of problems too. So there's nothing guaranteed. You have... At the moment, you're going to be getting Deron Bland back in a couple of weeks. You've got the basis of a good team. Here's where you say, let me take advantage of this opportunity that's in front of me. Because as Dan Quinn said, there needs to be a sense of urgency because tomorrow's not promised. And this is as good of a chance that you have right now as you've had in the last 30 years. It just is. And you got to make the most of it. So, I haven't listened to this yet this morning. But this is going to be interesting because they're talking about my Cowboys as always. Let's hear what they have to say on the ESPN, the four-letter network, about the Cowboys and the Eagles. Carry over from last year to this year. Yeah, Greeny, how can you say they haven't? They're 2-7 and seven in their last nine games. We talk about the pass rush not being there. We talk about blown Two and seven. We talk about lopsided scores that they're unfortunately on the opposite end of. This is a team that is too talented to be, no. I don't want to say bad, but this inconsistent. Mind you, I want, to, I want to point out something here. I saw that two and seven from uh, Ernie, I think, last night, posted on Twitter. Ernie posted that last night on Twitter. And... It's funny because I, had, I didn't realize it, but it's the truth because they, they ended up losing, you know, the playoff game and seven games. And now, of course, this one. So the Eagles are two and seven in the last nine games. And so, you know, it, you think that Kimberly Martin has been thinking this, you know, all this time and stuff. If you thought about that, then how come you guys pick the Eagles to be the best team in, in, in the division? I'm, I'm just saying. You're two and nine. 
if you start out a season two and nine, you would say blow it all up. But go ahead. Yeah, well, inconsistent and, or bad. I mean, the reality is they've well, been bad. There's they, no two ways to put it. The end of the game was absolutely <laughs> bad. Yeah. Like, giving yeah. away the game like that is ugly. But you're right. They're an incredibly talented team that we thought would figure it out. And we thought that the coordinators would address a lot of their issues, but they're still having some of the same struggles. Just look at the bottom of the screen, Jeff. They've lost seven of their last nine games. It, it, it has not been you see how they ride with that, right? Be, this would all be solved if our best player, in addition, catches a ball. So yeah. let's not overreact to make a catch in this decision. This is all yeah. There were symptoms. I mean, I mean, it's, I think that's what we were kind of looking at is when the game is on the line, all the little add-ups that we've all talked about at nauseum, but dating back to last year, and even moments this year, they shine in those last three minutes of the game. We will dive deeply into this mm. a little bit later because we're going to find out a lot about them by how they respond mm. to what happened. But let's go back to the three big questions. That was number one. Hawk, here's number two. Looking at their schedule. Are the Ravens going to start 0-5? Yeah, it's not looking pretty looking at the schedule, but they're too talented. I don't think that they start 0-5. I think with Lamar Jackson, obviously Derrick Henry in the backfield, Dave Flowers has played played well at times. They're still trying to figure out like what this team looks like with Derrick Henry this year. So A, they're too talented. B, the scariest rushing attack in football with the Ravens is going up potentially what looked like the weakest rushing defense on any level in the country last week. So I think the Cowboys are actually an opportunity for the Ravens to get over that hump. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you're right. They are too talented. I do resent the fact that you only named offensive players when you said they're I mean, talented. Matt Abike can ball, talented. Hamilton can ball, Humphrey can ball, Rope Let him know. can ball. I mean, Trent Simpson's incredible athlete. Ball. They they are, they are. have talent on both sides of the ball, which is why you're right. right. They're certainly I'm, not going to. So Baltimore and offense aren't synonymous? Like, <laughs> no, that's, yeah. I mean, <laughs> the Baltimore, the I ball, know. Okay, that's defensive like, players, yeah. they, they can Stop ball. <laughs> they, they can play. Let's, 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 let's be honest about Baltimore. I, I talked about them. I thought they were going to take a step back. I, I, not for the reasons they did against the Raiders. They had 10-point lead going in the fourth quarter, 11 penalties. That's not a yeah, John Harbaugh-type yep. coach team. They Self-inflicted wounds took this team out. They have to get better from that perspective. I think it's a get-right game with Dallas because they're, they're running defense. But make no mistake, they have to fix their own problems in-house. Okay, I get all that. 0-5 is just wild to me. They literally could be 3-2. You know, like if yeah. they could beat all of those teams. So yeah. I don't, mm-hmm. so it's, it's, it's two games. Well, they should have beat the team they played That's last the point. Week. They should have beaten the, the Raiders yeah. and they could have beaten yeah. the Chiefs. Yep. They were a toe away from beating the Chiefs. They were, uh, they had a 10 point lead in the fourth quarter against the Raiders and now this. All right, third big question. Oh, Jeff Saturday. Here we go. Did the Cowboys quiet off season, as it turned out, doom this roster and this team after all? Yeah, this, this is a Super Bowl or bust type season. You talked about Dak and can you take him to the Super Bowl. They don't have the players around him right now to take them there. That's, that's the problem. You're seeing a team get older and slower as, as they move forward. They, and they, they don't want to go outside and address it in free agency. For whatever reason, they thought what they had in-house was better. I think it's showing them their, their backfield is older. The, everything's going to be dependent on Dak and how skillful C.D. Lamb can be. That's, that's, that's a bad formula in today's NFL. Before I bring everyone in on this, I just need you to hear this because I need you to explain it to me. Yesterday, Jerry Jones was talking about how badly his team played and how they mm-hmm. feel after being blown but, out at home we're keep by the, the Saints. And this is what he said. If we've got any arbitrage around our neck, it's is that Jerry we've Jones. been a good, good uh, to very good team during the season over the last four or five years with Mike, and we haven't done well in the playoff. So let's trade uh, some challenges during the season for doing well in the playoff, if you want to look at it that way. This doesn't call for a, a, a change in the system. It doesn't call for a change in the player as much as it does uh, take what we've learned Sunday. But we can do this, and uh, – uh, we can do it with the uh, personnel that we've got out there right now. I love that man. I love I love everything about the way he says words. Um, but if I understand what he said at this, the beginning of that, which I think is the important part. So we've done well in the regular season. We haven't done well in the playoffs. So the solution is let's get our behinds handed to us yeah. in the regular season. Mark. And that <laughs> will solve Let's not make the playoffs. Our problem? <laughs> it, it's almost like we can't, we can't stink in the playoffs if we're not <laughs> no, in the playoffs no, all together. together. <laughs> ah, you know I mean? Well, that means. No, it. because the, he's. He, Jerry's grasping at straws here. Like, the thing that he constantly hears about his team is how they are a wonderful regular season team. 
And then why do we kill them? Because they don't get it done when it counts. So n he's leaning on, well, we're facing adversity now. Adversity makes everybody tougher, everybody better. Like, this could actually be a good thing. Do I buy it? Not really. Um, because <laughs> essentially, he, it, playing poorly or getting, uh, having losses in the regular season doesn't guarantee you a playoff spot. It only makes it tougher. And he, the opposite is that he's saying is it could be true, which is maybe their roster just isn't as good as he thought it was or hoped it would be. Because this, the, you talk about symptoms. Like, yeah. I was there week one when they played the Browns. The takeaway from that game was, to me, was not that the Cowboys looked great. It was the Browns did not play up to the level that we expected them to. So then you have week two happen. So to me, I'm not surprised that, that the Cowboys are scuffling a little bit because they didn't look like a great team in week one. This is not how it works normally. Like, normally the teams that, that are bad in the regular season are also bad later. <laughs> like, the teams that are good, like, it's, rare, it's rarely how it works. It's not a good strategy. Listen, I mean, in their last two home games, and the funniest stat in the world was that they brought a 16-game home winning streak into this game this past Sunday because those are regular season streaks. The reality is the last two games in which they have played at home, they have allowed 92 points. They just gave more money to players who already were playing as well as they could possibly pay play, which is uh, Dak Prescott and yeah. C.D. Lamb. What reason is there to think they're going to get better? Jeff, a perfect example is you wanted them to go get Derrick Henry last year. Correct. They didn't. What did they do instead? Right. They go back to 2018, get some <laughs> two great backs back in the day, right? And, and think that the 17-game season is going to be kind to them as we progress along. They spent the least amount in free agency outside of their own players. This is not the formula to give it. There's no addition. And I, I look at their offensive line. I get they have a young left there. But – that their offensive line is getting older, their backs are getting older, and you're putting more on Dak defensively. The inside, the interior portion of their defense, from the front defensive line all the way to back, is going to give you problems throughout the season. So I, the best argument I could make for Jerry potentially making some sense is like this is a wake-up call situation to get That's your attention. That's the only thing. But the problem is. We already knew what the issues were. Sometimes it's good there to be go. exposed to what your problems are so you can then address them. We knew what your problems were last year, mm -hmm. and you didn't address them. Yep. And now we're seeing them unaddressed again, and that to me speaks to leadership. Maybe they thought they addressed them with, by bringing Mike Zimmer in yeah. to run that defense. Mike Zimmer ain't, I, ain't had a tackle in a long time. I was going to say, unfortunately, Mike Zimmer doesn't have the uh, lateral quickness <laughs> and strength yeah. to play defensive tackle because that's honestly what they needed. They've needed it for since sure. last year. They needed it going into this year. And, mm -hmm. and the simulated pressures, which Mike Zimmer is known for, the disguises and coverage pre-snap, does not matter if a team can run it down your throat, right? Because right? then it also makes your offense one-dimensional, like we pointed out. Like, the offense wasn't doing bad in the first half of that game, but then it got so out of hand, they had to start tossing it around the yard. Six drives, six touchdowns Oof. for the New Orleans Saints. Yeah. That's bad on any level. Oh, Pop Warner, high school, okay. Division three. That's really Enough of that. Okay, so we sucked. But I do want to bring this up because, you know, there's always – People that say that uh, people steal content and all that. And it's like there's only so many things that are actually happening in the world and stuff. And people do come up with great ideas. But what you see right here, because you notice how many of the ESPN hosts today were talking about the Eagles being 2 and 9 in their last 11 games. The original post, which is funny because nobody was talking about that before Ernie the Cowboys fan. Because the post he put out... 20 hours ago, Jalen Hurts, because they didn't put this part in there too, Jalen Hurts has turned over the football 24 times since the beginning of last season. That's the most in the NFL. The Eagles are 2-9 and nine in their last 11 games. Nobody wants to talk about that. Can Eagle fans explain that to me? And it's funny because today ESPN, a couple of them brought that up, that the Eagles are 2-9 and nine in their last 11 games. Kind of interesting, but let me definitely say shout out to Ernie, the Cowboys fan, for getting the facts out there first. As always, good people, I appreciate you guys, and uh, today we've got the Dan Salio show, I think, I think today, it may be 3.30, it may be 4.30. He may end up just saying, screw you, we're not doing it, but look for it coming this afternoon. I'm Mark Holmes, and as always, I appreciate you guys. Peace out.